Okie dokie. Okay, well, let's go ahead and take a comfortable seat. Take a seat in which you're able to connect into the earth. So just notice the pressure underneath your pelvis, no matter whether you're sitting in a chair or on a block or blankets, the ground, just how your sit bones connect to the earth. And then lengthen your spine up towards the sky. Relax your shoulders. Deepen your breath. As I, uh, Robert Bly said, it is not our job to remain whole. We came to lose our leaves like the trees and be born again, drying up from the great roots. So you're reaching into the earth, lengthening your spine, deepening your breath, and can you bring in either your ujjayi breathing or the samavritti, the balanced inhale and exhale. And as you bring this breath with awareness, can you make the breath really smooth? So as you make the inhale smooth, and then the breath turns around and the exhale comes out. Can you make it as smooth and balanced with your inhale? Not in any rush to turn the breath around, but working on that quality of the, the silky smoothness of both the inhale and the exhale. And what do you have to do with the breath in order to make a subtle adjustment? Is the subtle adjustment you make at the beginning of the inhale? Or is it when you're getting to the transition between um, the middle of your exhale? Where in that breath cycle Can you just make it a little smoother? Make the change that you do very small.
and then release any control on your breath. But you can still notice how your body is being breathed. And then honoring your presence, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Just honoring the time that you've set aside to come to your yoga mat, to do your practice, to take care of yourself. When we are able to have the tapas or the, the discipline to care for ourselves, we are better able to be of service to others. So in that spirit of together, saha, saha na bhavatu, saha na bunaktu, saha vidyam karava vaai, teja svina varim tamas tu, ma vidvisha, Ba -ai. So we'll sing. I hope you'll sing with me. Together, may we be protected. Together, may we be nourished. May our practice bring us great energy. And may it help illuminate the darkness. And may we not dispel or hate others. Take a deep inhale. Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sabidyam Karavavai Teja Svinavarim Tamas Tu exhale, bow your head towards your heart. Release your hands and lift your case. All right. Can we come to um, Varasana? Can you set in Varasana if it's all right? This is hero's pose. If it's all right with your knees and your ankles, you might need a block. You might need um, some blankets or large books. When you sit in Varasana, when I sit in it, the knees are together, the heels are wide apart. And you'll bring either a block between the heels, a large book, <laughs> the dictionary, those encyclopedias that you haven't been looking at. And, and then as you go to sit back, take your hands on the calves and draw the flesh of the calf back towards the feet and out to the side. And that's your seat in Varasana. So if you have really tight um, through the tops of the thighs, you might 
have to sit on more than one block or a block and some blankets. Great. And then um, let's inhale the arms straight ahead. Exhale, draw them toward you with the hands clasped. Inhale, push them away. Exhale, relax your shoulders. Inhale, lift both arms. Lengthen through your sides. Reach all the way up. Deep inhale. Exhale, release the arms. Reach out the heels of the hands. Great. Inhale, take them forward. Change the clasp. Exhale, draw them in. The inhale, reach them away. We'll stay for the exhale. So even as you reach forward, can you broaden across the upper back? And then your next inhale, go ahead, lift the heart, lift the arms, lengthen through the sides, and your exhale, release the arms. Great. Inhale the arms halfway. This time you're gonna to twist to your um, right. So exhale, turn to the right. Can you still find the quality of your breathing? What is the quality like in the twist? How is it different? Take another inhale and then with the exhale, you're gonna turn back to center. Rest your hands on the thighs and back to the breathing. Okay, at the bottom of that exhale, inhale, take the arms out. And exhale, twist to your left. So the, the left fingers are behind you, the right hand might be across the outer left knee. Still deep breathing. Another full inhale. And then exhale, turn back over the lap, rest both hands and drop back into Ujjayi breathing or the balanced inhale and exhale. It's, it's more about just, can you ground back down into the, the breath and the smooth quality of both the inhale and the exhale. All right, and then we're gonna come off of your prop if you're sitting on one, move it out of the way and come on to all fours. <clears throat> Inhale, exhale, open the, back, the right knee, take the right leg back, toes are tucked under on the ground. Do you feel the, the big toe on the ground, the heel, I mean the ball of the foot on the ground, Now let's take the left leg back to match the right. Now you're in plank pose. You might be on your forearms if that's more comfortable for you, if your wrists are bothering you. You could isometrically bring the heels toward each other. We've been working a lot on the inner thigh, so draw those adductors, the inner thighs, toward the thigh bone itself, the middle, the upper inner thigh. Exhale, let's lightly touch the knees down. And exhale, just take the hips back for a moment, child's pose, but let's keep the arms ahead. Again, the quality of your breathing.
Inhale, back to all fours. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, table. Exhale, right leg back, left arm out. Deep inhale, still practicing that you're breathing. And when you're ready, lift the back leg and reach the left arm ahead. Can you lengthen out the ball of the right foot instead of the heel? Exhale, lower. Inhale, let's um, take the left leg back. And again, even as the left toes touch down, if you've been practicing this week, we were, we were really toning the inner thigh and I want to encourage you to do that right now. So on the back leg, draw the lower adductor towards the inseam of the left leg, the middle, the upper, pick up the back leg, take your other arm out, find the belly, Reach your arm ahead. Exhale, lower. Inhale, cat. Exhale to cow pose. There go the sit bones wide apart, belly softens. Cat. Cow. Inhale, cat pose. Exhale, child pose. Keep the arms straight ahead, low back long, cat shape. It's just a brief moment. Inhale, come back up. And then you're gonna either exhale to downward facing dog or puppy. If you're going to puppy, then you walk your hands forward. Keep the hips up. If you're going to downward dog, you'll go ahead and lift, tuck the toes and lift the hips up and back. I know, there's those calves. So whether you're in puppy or downward dog, can you actively reach into your finger pads and knuckles? Can you really reach from the shoulder blades wrapping all the way to your hands? And can you take the rib cage toward the pelvis? Lengthen the spine. Breathing deeply. Great. Inhale, plank pose. Strong at the inner thighs. Yeah. And then lower the knees. Lightly, great. And then you're gonna walk the hands back and get your blocks so that you've got them handy. All right, so now you've got your blocks and you're gonna go, um, let's go into a low lunge where you're gonna take, um, let's see, let's have a, we might want a blanket too, to pad the knee. You might take the back knee to the ground, so. We can have a blanket available to pad that back knee in a moment. And then you're gonna have left foot forward, right foot back. You're coming into a low lunge. And for a moment, let's reach out the right heel. Reach the right heel out. So that when you reach your right heel out, you feel a, a stretch maybe in the right calf. So the right heel reaches out long. And I can notice when I reach my right heel out, I'm gonna bring my awareness into the front of my right hip. I just wanna notice when I reach out my right heel, what's the space like at the front of my right hip? Then let's um, 
lift the heel up, come more up on the ball of the foot. The big toe is pressing down. Big toe is pressing down. So a lot of these um, instructions I give you, like right now, I'm going to give you one. And this is a, a fascial um, piece. This isn't about a lot of gripping or tone. You're going to keep the weight still on the right big toe. But you're also going to reach out the inner right heel. You're going to reach out, lengthen out. So this is fascial. Still the weight's on the big toe, but you're going to lengthen the inner right heel a little farther back. And just notice the, the front of the right hip. And then we're going to exhale and bring the right knee down. So you could take um, a blanket if you want a little more padding under that knee. Yeah. And you're welcome to relax the top of the back foot. Let the left knee come a little forward. If you have blocks, you might make them taller. Hmm. Lift the top of your breastbone. One more deep inhale. And then we're going to exhale. Come back up. We'll bring hands, move the blocks forward. Tuck the back toe under. Let's inhale, step forward. So here you are, Uttanasana, forward fold. We'll inhale halfway. And then exhale, step your left foot back. So here we are in the low lunge. Let's first reach out your left heel. So you're going to reach the left heel way back. And you might notice what that does in regards to the, the left calf. If your left calf has some tightness. And also when I reach out the left heel, I might bring my awareness to the front of the left hip. And I just want to notice what's the space like at the front of the left hip. Then let's come, let's pick the heel up so the back foot's a little more vertical. And then you're going to keep the weight. So you, you notice like the little toe just has a, just a little bit of weight on it. Not very much. The big toe is pressing down and you're going to lengthen the inner left heel a little bit away from you, a little farther away. Then we'll lower the back knee. The right knee comes a little forward of your right heel. You might take your blocks, if you have blocks, tall, or you could take your hands on the top of your thigh. And, and even, we, t we talk a lot about the back leg because we're lengthening the, the thigh muscles on the back leg, the quads. But on the front leg, we're also lengthening the inner thigh towards the knee on the front leg. Lift the top of the breastbone. How is the breathing? Are you still practicing your ujjayi breathing or your balanced inhale and exhale? Another deep inhale. And then with the exhale, you're gonna press yourself back, come back to a low lunge, 
and step forward to a forward fold, Uttanasana. Bow down to the earth, release the back of the head. You can see your feet there too, probably. So you might just look at the feet. Are they parallel? Can you reach strongly into the inner heel? That doesn't mean that the arch falls. It just means you're putting a little more weight at the inner heel all the way from the inner thigh and lifting from the outer heels all the way up. Good. Inhale halfway. And exhale, step back, downward facing dog. You might move your blanket out of the way as you step back to downward dog. Inhale, plank. So even in plank pose, I'm strongly reaching. I can isometrically draw the heels toward each other. I can reach out the inner heels and the outer heels up towards the outer hip. Then we'll lightly touch the knees to the ground and walk the hands back. We're gonna set up to do an upper back opener. So if you'll take um, either either two blocks end to end like that on your mat. I'm going sideways. Yours will be just on your mat. If you don't have two blocks, then I would take two blankets one, and fold them into like thirds. So you could fold that into thirds. So you could use something like that instead of your blocks. If you have blocks or something like that, you're gonna pad the blocks with one of your blankets or maybe two of your blankets. Sometimes I like the, the double decker. So either I've got two blankets on the ground or I've got um, a couple blocks. I could also use a foam roller if I want to do that. This is just going to be for your upper back. We're just going to open the upper back. So when you come around, you'll have both feet on the ground and you're going to put your um, shoulder blades at the edge of those blankets or blocks or foam roller or whatever. Hands behind the head, the knees are bent, feet on the floor. Draw the chin to the chest. So you're using your hands to lift your chin to your chest. And then exhale, just can you, without flaring the lower ribs, you're gonna just start to come up and over this. Not hurrying, there's no rush. The elbows are toward each other. I'm still supporting my head with my hands so that my neck doesn't have to work so hard. I'm gonna to start to, to lengthen my elbows, my elbows overhead a little bit. I still hold my head. Using your breathing. It's like, you know, millimeter by millimeter.
And then another deep inhale. With your exhale, you're gonna lift your head, chin toward the chest, straighten one leg, and lift up to sitting. Great. All right, I'm gonna to turn to face you. So now, can you take your left leg and bring your left heel towards the right sit bone? Left heel towards the right sit bone. And then just draw your right foot in. So you're sitting on the ground. You have the left heel towards the right sit bone, right foot on the floor. Like that. And you're gonna to turn to the right. So you're just, you can just hold either the, the right knee inside the elbow or just with the right hand, and just a little twist to the right. And the weight, I, I feel both sit bones on the ground. Both of my sit bones are touching. The right one is on the ground. The left one is at a little different angle, but I feel the definitely the right sit bone is, is on the floor. And then we're gonna turn back to center. Let's switch to the other side. So you'll bring the right heel towards the left sit bone. And just draw your foot in. Feel both sit bones on the ground. And then your right, I mean, left hand behind you and the right hand across. Great, and then back to center. Great, both feet on the ground. Well, since we're here anyway, there you are with both feet. Let's lean back a little. And then take the hands underneath, uh, behind the knees. Lift the feet from the ground. So, and, and Try to resist arching the low back. So you don't need to arch your low back. You're drawing your knees in. The back is long. And then you might lift the shins to be parallel with the floor. You can lift your heart. So lift up through the heart. Take the hands alongside, reach them out. Maybe the legs go up. And then we'll exhale and release that. Great. And then let's come back around. We're going to come up to standing. So you can move that stuff out of the way. You'll have your blocks handy, but we're going to come up to standing. And we're going to take side angle pose. So you step your feet right apart. Turn your um, back foot in. So we'll make the right foot the forward foot and the left foot your back foot. So I'll, I'll mirror you inside. A prop at the outer right shin. Yeah. All right. Ready for side angle? Feet are wide apart. Left foot out. Right foot in. Inhale the arms out. And exhale, side angle, Parshva Konasana. Reaching into the right, or your left outer heel. Reach into the left outer heel. Turn the heart to the sky. Almost as if as if from the top of your pelvis on the left, you're gonna reach into the left outer heel 
and from the top of the pelvis on the left, you're gonna reach all the way out through that arm. Two different directions there. And then we're gonna inhale and come up. And exhale, spin your feet the other way. Inhale the arms out. And exhale, side angle. Now you're reaching into the, the back leg, outer heel. Even as you lengthen the front inner thigh. Oh. Oh, and you could, while you're there, if you remember on the, on the back inner thigh, the, the portion of that inner thigh that's more towards the front of the leg, can you tone that back to the inseam? You'll feel the pelvis move a little when you do that. Mm. And then inhale, come up. Great, exhale, release. Step your feet together. Mountain pose. Deep breathing. <clears throat> Still working with your breathing. What's the quality like? And then releasing mountain pose. And we're gonna to step to our sun salutation. So you can have a couple blocks if you've got blocks. <clears throat> I'm gonna go sideways, if that helps. All right, hands in front of your heart. Reaching down into the ground. Release your arms, inhale, upward hands pose. Exhale, forward fold, downward, I mean, <laughs> Uttanasana. Mm, there, see, that was that moment of the brain. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step your right foot back. Let's lift the back heel, reach back into the, the ball of the right foot, the big toe, pelvis turns a tad bit to the right. Even as you, you can reach the right heel a little away, just slightly, the right inner heel. Press down into the ground on the front heel. On the right leg, tone the, the abductors toward the inseam of that leg and come upright. Take your arms in any position. With your next inhale, take the arms wide. Exhale, plank pose. Inhaling in plank pose. Exhale, knees touch. Chest comes down. Reach out the legs. Tone the inner thighs right to the inseam of themselves and inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower. Inhale, all fours. Plank and downward facing dog or puppy. Step 
smooth breathing. Another deep inhale. And your exhale, you're gonna step your right foot forward. Lift the back heel. Turn the pelvis a tad to the left. Reach out the inner left heel. Inhale, come up right. Your next inhale, the arms go out. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, step forward. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands in front of the heart. Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, downward facing dog or puppy, that is fine to go to puppy pose because you'll just make the transitions from puppy. Otherwise, if you're in downward dog, no matter which you're in, you're reaching strongly to the hands. You're lengthening the rib cage back. Let's inhale and lift your left leg. Come up on the ball of the right foot and exhale, left foot forward. Find that cat pose on your way. Tone the right inner thigh towards the inseam of itself, right in towards the bone. Inhale, come up. Inhale, the arms back out. Exhale again, plank. You're welcome to bring the knees to the ground and your chest comes down. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale, lower. Inhale, all fours. Exhale, either puppy or downward facing dog. So here you are, you're in your resting pose, downward dog or puppy. And I'll just remind you that you're not alone. You're practicing with others. That we are practicing together. With your next inhale, let's take the right leg up and bring the right foot forward. Inhale up. Inhale, the arms out. Exhale, bow. Inhale, step forward. Exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale, halfway. Exhale, bow. And inhale all the way up, upward hands. And exhale, hands back in front of the heart. One more. This time we won't we won't add the lunges. Well, we're just gonna um, leave out the lunges, but we're gonna do our our movement. Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine forward. Lift the heart. Exhale, plank pose. So in your plank pose, inner thighs are strong, reaching into the inseam of the legs. Base of the skull is even with the upper back. You're broad across your upper back. Let's take another deep inhale. You could come forward on the toes. Exhale, bring the knees down, your chest down. Strong with the legs. Inhale, lift. Lift the top of the breastbone, broaden across the collarbones. And lower. Inhale, all fours. Plank. And downward dog. Or puppy. Then you're going to step the feet, you know, like a foot's uh, length forward, closer to your hands. You'll take a deep inhale, exhale, bend both knees, and either step or hop forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, bow. Inhale, up. And exhale, hands back in front of the heart. And release your arms. Let the arms dangle. Let, so you, you've let go of that, but can you still be present for the, what you notice inside the body, the pulsation inside your body, the weight on your heels. Good. All right, let's take a standing <clears throat> quad stretch as opposed to like um, the reclined Supta Virasana. So you could go, if you want to have a chair nearby, you're welcome to have that, a wall nearby, so that I'm going to grab this chair in case I need it. You can just stand close to something. It's going to look something like, um, if I shift my weight to the right, I'm going to bring the left knee up. And if I need a strap, I'll put a strap around that ankle. The knee is going to go straight down to the ground. So I've got a hold of my um, left ankle. I'm going to turn sideways for a second because when, when you stand on the right leg right now and you've got your left, your hand on your left foot, and first I'm going to encourage you to find the inner right heel. Reach from the right inner thigh all the way down into the right inner heel. Yeah, you could use a towel or a strap to hold this as well. 
Reach, reach down into the right inner heel. That doesn't mean you drop the right inner arch. And then lift up the outside of the right leg from the right outer heel all the way up to the greater trochanter. Left knee's pointing straight towards the ground. Now, if you have a hold of your foot, turn your hand to point the palm out and grab the inside. So now, if you have a hold, if you don't, don't worry about it. The, the thumb is probably matches the, the ball of the foot. My thumb is on the ball right below my left big toe. It's just taking the shoulder into a little different position. Now, let's reach the, the knee straight down and then start to move your left knee back just slightly. Reach into your hand or the strap or the belt or the towel. And then we'll let this go. Stand on both feet. And just kind of notice like, how does the weight fall down into the, the left side? How is it different than how it falls into the right? Then you're going to turn around. Or maybe you don't turn around. <laughs> I got to turn around. That's funny. Okay, so now you're going to shift the weight to the left leg. Take your strap or your belt or whatever, and you can grab onto your um, right ankle. On the standing leg, reach strongly down into the the left inner heel, and from the left outer heel, reach up. Uh, if you have a hold of your foot, you might change your grip a little bit so that you're holding on the inner foot instead of the outer foot. The knees are toward each other, and the, the right knee is pointing straight to the earth. Then you might start to take, reach your right foot into your right hand, Reach it back, keep pressing strongly into the right hand. Lengthen out the right um, thigh bones. I mean bone, muscle. Mm. And then bring it back and bring it down. And then step the feet wide apart. Hands on your hips. Feet are wide, about the width of your, um, like one of your legs. Lift through the top of the breastbone and bow forward. Hands are gonna come either to blocks or the floor. Feet are parallel. And let's have the wrists under your shoulders, either on blocks or the floor. We're just gonna take a little twist. So you're gonna bring your left hand into the space between your two hands, right hand up on your hip and strongly reach down as you twist towards your right. Really strongly reaching down into the hand as it connects to either the block or the floor. Exhale back to center, switch hands. Strongly reaching all the way down. Keep reaching into the hand that's on the ground. Spine is long. And exhale back to center. Walk your hands out, downward dog arms. So you might have hands on blocks or hands on the ground. And here, can you notice, is the pubic bone at midline? Is it in the center or do you think it's closer to one of the inner thighs? The pelvis, we want the sacrum to be level at the back body in, in this. So we might just notice if one side, if you think one side is a little higher, 
you might try reaching from the, say, if the right side feels higher, you're going to reach from the right inner knee to the right inner heel. That should take the pelvis and turn it slightly left, for example. If you feel like you're balanced, don't, don't do it. Just stay with where you are. And then we'll walk the hands back. Shift them up to the hips and come back upright. Oh, yeah, let's stick the feet together. And is standing. Okay. All right, can we? I want to um, just offer you the option of just a um, camel with a good support, right? So if you went back to the support that you had, that you put under your upper back, you could use that. So, you know, like for example, I had two blocks and I had two blankets. You maybe had a roller or maybe you had, I don't know, a stack of books. And, and so, and then you'll want probably some support for your knees. Like that. So the feet, I'm gonna put them up on top of my, um, my little stack. So my ankles are on top of my little stack. And then I'm gonna stand on my knees. So, once we're here, you're going to, I want you to strongly reach from the inner thighs straight down into the ground. And you will, and also those of you who have been working with the adductors, you're, think of those inner thighs wrapping in toward each other and then reaching all the way to the, to the ground. So keep that strong. You can take the hands at the back of the pelvis. If you can point the fingers uh, upward or out towards a 45, do. Strongly reaching into the ground. And then just taking, lifting the top of the breastbone. Keep reaching down, reaching down as you lengthen up some. And then come up and just rest for a moment. What I notice in my own body is that as I try to keep the inner thighs toned and reaching, they, there's like parts of them that I feel them flicker, kind of like lights going on and off a little bit. And I'm really working to, to strengthen them enough so that they're going to support me and be more steady in, in this and in many different poses I'm doing. Let's try this again. So hands at the back of the pelvis. And from the deep low belly, we could say starting from the lower psoas, I'm going to reach down to the ground all the way through the inner thighs. And from the middle psoas, this is in the pelvis, I'm lengthening up. So two different directions. Lifting the top of the breastbone, broadening the collarbones. You can keep the chin forward if your neck asks you to do that. And then we're going to come up and rest before we do another one. If you have a question, you can ask a question. You're welcome to hit your space bar and ask a question. All right. So let's take the three. Three is the magic number. So we take hands at the back of the pelvis from the lower psoas. So this, this, this crosses the pelvis. It goes to the 
the inner thigh, it, it's fascially connected all the way down through the adductors straight into the ground. So find that. Keep that reaching. And then from the middle psoas, inside the pelvis, start to lengthen up. So that's two directions again. Lift the heart. The get, you could have the chin toward the chest. Or if the neck is okay, you can look back. The hands might find the feet, they might not. And then we'll release. And then we're going to turn around and take a downward dog. So you might take your little one of your little stack that your feet were on. You might turn it. And you might then find a way to take downward dog that you can give your head a little bit of support. Great. And then we'll bring the knees down and take the knees wide apart, the big toes together, child's pose. Except lengthen your low back, lengthen the low back. And then we'll walk the hands back. All right, we can move that out of the way. Come uh, and take a seat on one of your blankets. We're gonna take a twist. We're gonna take Marichyasana three. So if you take your left leg straight and bend the right knee, inhale deeply. And as you exhale, you're gonna to turn toward the right, towards the bent knee. the center and switch sides left hand behind you can either hug the knee or bring the elbow to the outside of the knee as you twist And then back to center. Great. Yeah. And then let's bring this down to, um, well, let's take our pranayama first. We'll do, sometimes I like doing um, pranayama before shavasana. So I like to switch it up sometimes to see what is the effect? How does that feel? So for this morning, we're gonna take pranayama now. So go ahead and make your seat comfortable. You can sit in a chair, it doesn't matter. Just making a comfortable seat is more important. And the, the pranayama we're gonna do this morning is gonna be um, Nadi Shodhana with, we're gonna go one to one to one to one. So we've been working a little bit with box breathing We've done um, box breathing where we'll like inhale for four to six, suspend for four to six, whatever it works for you. And then exhale that same distance, suspend the exhale, same amount and do it again. So we've been doing that with just Ujjayi breathing. And you're welcome to do that as well. 
And, and then I'm gonna invite you to, to take Nadi Shodna and do the same box breathing. So if you bring the hand so that the, the ring and the pinky and the thumb, you're gonna use the very tips of those rather than the flats, the tips like little calipers. They'll go below the cartilage of the nose. Go ahead, inhale through both nostrils and exhale out both nostrils. One more time, do that. And you, excuse me, you might remember, we might do this for anywhere from four to six, whatever is right for your breathing. And then after the bottom of your next exhale, close the right nostril and inhale left for a count of six. Pause for six. Constrict the left nostril and then you'll exhale out the right for the same amount of time, whether it's four or six. At the bottom of that exhale, you're gonna hold the breath out. And then inhale left. So you might like doing it for just four because that's probably more achievable. And you're doing the suspension at the top of the inhale after breathing in through the left for a count of four, you hold for four, you exhale for four, you hold for four, and you keep going. And you'll do one more round. And we'll, you'll always end on the exhale. And then you're welcome to either bring yourself to Shavasana or stay in your seated position. It's a, totally up to you, whatever feels right.
Allow your breath to deepen. And gently awaken your body to movement. make a transition over to one side and just mindfully use the arms to press yourself back up to sitting your hands together in front of your heart. And you're welcome to join me. We'll close the practice by chanting in the sound of home. I just encourage you to, if you, if you do the chant, feel the vibration as it moves all the way up through your body. Take a deep inhale. Ah. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for doing your practice. And I'll, I'll um, come closer, but I'm, I'm filled with gratitude that you're here this morning. So thank you for that.